Hi, it's Don Sutherton in another weekly episode of Everything Korea, Office Chat. The new format is similar to if I was visiting you, sitting in the office with you, each of us grabbing a coffee or tea, and discussing issues that are, would be uh, impacting your business. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. This week's topic is different and unique, and but very timely. So with that, North Korea back in the news. Uh, many of you may not know, but for decades I've been very involved in issues of North Korea. Uh, going back to even the, the years when I was teaching at West Point, I remember one of the very senior generals who was working in, in the, uh, uh, the U.S. government, very concerned about North Korea. Uh, uh, and again, this was probably 1988, 1989. Uh, in my academic years, post-2000, uh, probably for the next five, four or five years there, I was very engaged in academia, uh, looking at all phases of Korean culture, history, the economics, many different situations dealing with Korea, including North Korea. Uh, and I became friends with some of the leading global scholars on North Korea, both Korean, Russian, and of course American. And so I've followed over the decades. Much of my role working with the global OEMs, especially uh, the uh, U.S.-based, uh, Korea-based uh, Korea operations that are you know, operating out of the U.S., uh, where we're sending groups of people over to Korea all the time, uh, sometimes dealer groups, sometimes uh, manufacturing teams, uh, a lot of times just em employees of, a US, of the U.S. entity going over to Korea and uh, maybe on business. Uh, and then there'd be saber rather rattling with North Korea. There'd be a spike in, in this news and there'd be concerns, you know, uh, people would be backing out. One time I had, uh, you know, a very senior executive say that, you know, his family was going to go and was so upset that he was going to Korea the next day. And, uh, you know, in most of the situations I've, I've explained where uh, saber rattling has been a long term uh, tactic of North Korea, though concerning but I didn't feel it was really going to disrupt that trip. Um, that said, you know, uh, we're seeing a, uh, a spike again, just mentioning in the news, and I'll cover that today in, in, my, in my commentary. So sit back, again, take another sip of coffee, uh, and we'll go ahead and get started. With the reoccurring global COVID concerns, and for the United States, a disputed election and recovery plans like the Biden Economic Relief Program, we have not heard much in aims, uh, mainstream media about North Korea. In other words, there's a lot of other stories that have been much more timely and more like the border with Mexico. I mean, all these issues come up. The, the mainstream media tends to pick these big high profile stories uh, and, and, and focus on those. So, but not until this last week when North Korea broke months of silence in warning with regards to the, the scaled down, but nevertheless the military exercises that were being conducted by the U.S. and South Korea. M many years are these massive um, uh, bill simulations uh, to protect, you know, in the future for the U.S. And the, and, the, and the South Korean forces to work together, sometimes even with other Asia Pacific countries. But we, they, they've been sort of put off for the last couple of years. They did another round of them. It, that helped spike uh, the response to North Korea, along with the U.S. Secretary of State, uh, Tony Blinken, and Defense Secretary Lloyd traveling to Asia Pacific for meetings with the Japanese uh, and their South Korean uh, 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 counterparts. They also met with China, too, even after that. But North Korea was certainly a, a top news story back in, the, with, in 1920, uh, 2018 in the summit in Singapore between then-President Trump and Kim Jong-un. Uh, it was followed by two more meetings, one in Hanoi in February of 2019, and then on the border uh, between the Koreas in July of 2019. These were really high-profile stories. You know, to some experts, these meetings are now seen to be largely as photo ops as opposed to meaningful steps toward achieving peace and denuclearization on the Korean Peninsula. And of course, that has been a major theme. Uh, then enter the pandemic, when at least for 2020, we saw a little change in the U.S.-Korean uh, relations. You know, on the U.S. side, the Trump administration all, all, all but shifted away from North Korea, except to, say, to claim some successes and credits 
in de-escalating tensions as part of the Trump re-election campaign. So there was almost like no diplomatic anything going on. You know, I look at a few, this a few different ways, and I, I'm not trying to be political here or partisan, but I would say my thoughts in the past years is that North Korea always waits to see the, the results of a U.S. Uh, uh, presidential election and then plot a strategy. You know, so this is very common. I've seen this with Obama administration, Bush administrations before that, the Clinton administrations, where you know th that last year, you know, North Korea says, you know, they may may or may not be in power for another four years, so maybe we just back off and we see what the, who the next person will be. Um, on top of that, we need to layer on, you know, uh, that the Biden administration uh, begins as Kim Jong Un, -un faces pro probably the toughest moment in his nine-year career. He's third generation uh, leadership in North Korea. Uh, North Korea has a battered economy that has suffered further amid the pandemic border closures, while the previous summits with Trump that failed to lift the crippling sanctions. So sanctions still stayed on, but during the, the pandemic, North Korea just really shuts down their borders. They did the same thing with SARS. They did the same thing with other, when there's other, you know, uh, major, you know, communicable diseases, they tend to shut the borders down and that just completely stops trade, you know. Currently though, the U.S. intelligence has concerns that North Korea could be preparing to carry out its first weapons test since President Biden came into office. North Korea traditionally has done some kind of, of strong uh, provocating uh, action uh, AKA ICMBM missile launches or nuclear testing early in the leadership of both US and in South Korean presidencies, you know, and the South Korean election is a year from now. Okay, so as for the Biden strategy, senior US officials are staying with past policy and have reaffirmed the commitment to a complete denuclearization on North Korea. So we're still staying course with that policy, uh, you know, because that's really a great, a great strategic and of, of, of safety uh, issues. We can expect a new rounds of threats and warnings from North Korea, more so as the U.S. is reaffirming commitments in the region, as they are right now, with our South Korean allies, not to mention as the top U.S. Uh, uh, officials are also drawing attention to North, uh, North Korean security challenges and their systematic and widespread abuses against its own people, the human rights issues. So these things all spur reaction from North Korea. We saw some beginning of last week. We'll probably see either some sort of more military, you know, missile testing or nuclear testing, and then of course a round of, of more dialogue that comes back. So if you have any questions on this, you know, please feel free to reach out to me. You know, I'm per se, I'm not a North Korean expert, but you know, I do have deep resources. I monitor it. Um, at this point, uh, probably a little concern for most of you because you're not going to be traveling to Korea with the two-week quarantine still in place. Uh, so it's not like that. You're not going to be sending teams over. You're not going to be having, you know, sending a group of your dealers or your, you know, of, of your of your clients over. So, so a little concern. Uh, there's a little concern there. But it, uh, people are, that work for Korean-based companies globally are always concerned when something spikes in North Korea. Is it going to affect our supply chain? Are they going to invade South Korea and disrupt, you know, you know, our company? You know, um, so uh, these are always concerns that come out. And so, if you do have questions on those, feel free to reach out to me. I've handled these for 25 years now, and and watch it very carefully. So, with that in mind, we're finishing up our office chat. I'll have my cup of coffee when I'm done. Talk to you very soon. Take care.